Sia. Good morning, everyone. It was very impressive. Uh, it's not easy for me to talk after the session of Anis Basweda. But after hearing a very beautiful music, I'm not relieved. So I hope you enjoy the music and I hope you will enjoy my talk. Uh, the, uh, the program today is about technology, entertainment and design. And I think I was wondering how can I entertain this audience, students, professors, by having my talk, a serious talk by the way. So I decided I asked the organizers, can I just stand here in the long view rather than standing here stand still as a robot so that I can entertain you. So hopefully I can entertain you as well as Shahrini and Manohara. So let's see how it goes. Uh, when I flew in from Jakarta last night, I arrived in the hotel around midnight. Thank you for the two guys who picked me up, Mas Danang and Mas Ali. I was actually a bit nervous. And this is the first time, tell you frankly, that I'm nervous to give a speech. Because I have been giving a lot of lectures, speeches, not only in Indonesia but internationally. Two weeks ago, actually, I'm on my way back from a small, very beautiful resort, Williamsburg in Virginia, just two hours drive from Washington DC. And I was attending uh, the Global Network Conference on Corporate Governance. And before that, I was also in Tokyo, joining the OECD Conference on Corporate Governance. And I always talk with an ease way. I, I don't feel nervous. But last night, I was so nervous. Why? And I get the answer today. Because I'm going to talk in front of people who have a young spirit, a youthful spirit. And it's not easy. To talk in front of uh, old people, it's easier. And by the way, I have to be proud. And I think, hopefully, it has to be proud. Because Pahanis <coughs> Basweda actually is one of my quote-unquote students. Because in one of my classes, he was attending as one of the independent commissaries of a company where I'm lecturing in corporate governance. So I'm happy that Pahanis Vasweda is also uh, very compassionate with what he's doing now, which is not very far from governance to governance. And I've been also lecturing in front of, uh, you all know, the famous young entrepreneurs in Indonesia, Pak Sandiaga Uno. And I was giving a lecture about corporate governance, about how to govern a company in an ethical and social responsible way. And here I am now in front of you. So it's not easy. And also that this is about sharing the ideas, about sharing the experience. So I can tell myself, if I give you a wrong ideas, then you might think that wrong ideas is a better idea. So I have to be careful that the idea must be good and applicable. So this is the network that I have. Now, the, I like the previous presenter, Tias, the way she mentioned about the importance of imagination. Imagine. And this is precisely her motto, it's not very far from my motto. If you see my view data, my motto is dream. And your dreams will fall short. Continue to dream, because imagination is a power that will drive you to your destination. And I think we can proudly uh, give an applause to Tias. <laughs> and this is precisely what I experienced. If Tias experienced a changing in imagination when he was a small kindergarten, goes to uh, you know, elementary school when she was a uh, uh, dekorasi semua temboknya sampai belepotan, and then goes to junior high school and senior high school. I also have a different phase of my dream. So when I was in 90s, I was, by the way, a uh, graduate from physics engineering. So I studied nuclear, I studied instrumentation, I studied distributed control systems, I studied about computer, anything about computer at that time. By the way, there is no uh, internet yet at the time. So uh, I was thinking that I will be an engineer, working in an oil company, in a, a good factory. But then the dreams changed. I was on my way to Spain to take my PhD on the industrial engineer. 
But my purpose, I stopped by in the Philippines just to learn my English. Because the program in Spain will be delivered in English. So I stuck in the Philippines for a couple of months. But then I found out a new area, which is very interesting, which is the industrial economy. So I decided not to continue my PhD programs and stay in the Philippines and start studying about industrial economics. So you get the answer right now. What the hell is this guy studying physics engineering, now becoming an economist? <laughs> So don't blame me if I will talk to you, engineer, professor, computer scientist, doctor, health practitioners, about some things that perhaps many of you have nothing to understand. Don't blame me. But it's better than if I standing here, I talk to you about some things that I don't understand. So I'm going to tell you something that I understand very well, and this has been my passion for the last 10 years in my professional work. And I hope that you will understand a little bit about what corporate governance is all about and the rule of the economy. But I don't promise you that at the end of this session you will finally become an economist. No. At least you can be an analyst. So if we move back about the history of the economy in the last 10 years, your experience about the, the up and downs of the world economy. And there is a, a very famous uh, company called, later on I will discuss about it in a bit details, called Enron. This is the most, uh, one of the one of big uh, power based uh, technology uh, industry in the US. And we all know the history of Enron, it collapsed. And with the collapse of Enrons, the U.S. economy is in trouble, was in trouble. And soon after Enron, we have our own crisis, what we call the financial crisis. So, and it's in 1998. And I was then, at that time, I was just joining the International Finance Corporation. So by the way, the International Corporation is the World Bank Group, part of the World Bank Group, who is very active in alleviating poverty escalating people from the poverty through the private sector development. So there I was in IFC and I witnessed the, the crisis. And here, basically the crisis was also caused by the many mismanaged corporations. You remember what happened to Lipo, you remember what happened to Bizier, you remember what happened to all the conglomerates, the big companies who are practicing bad governance at the time. They are all collapsed. And because of that, they contribute to the financial crisis in Indonesia. So, we have our own crisis. And fast track, in 2008, just barely five years ago, we have what we call the mortgage crisis in the US. This is a crisis caused by, because many people wanted to buy a second and third home. There are many rich people, especially the middle class income people in the US. They want to buy a second and third home by applying a debt. Jadi mencari utang baru from the banks. And the problem is if this debt accumulated, the economy has a limit. When the debt accumulated, there is a point, point in time that the economy, what we call, will burst. It's just like a balloon. When you pump, when you pump an air into the balloon, it will continuously go bigger and bigger and will explode. And that's what the economy is all about. So it has a limit. And that's what happened in 2008. And just recently, a year ago, 2012, we had the, a crisis, what we call the PIGS, the P-I-G-S. It stands for the economy that experienced crisis in Europe. P stands for Portugal, <coughs> I stands for, uh, uh, G stands for uh, Greece, and I stands for Italy. So, here we have also a crisis in Europe. Now, when I analyze that, what happens to all this crisis? I have to skip all this because these are the stuff of economics, which I don't think you will understand. <laughs> but I'll come back again later if we have time. So what are the underlying causes of the global crisis? Here we go. The financial crisis the global crisis is precisely because, in a simple layman terms, because of the greediness 
of the human being. Put simply, because of the greediness of the businessmen, the private sector. I gave you a statistic that just recently the World Bank made a survey that you realize that 9 out of 10 jobs in the world are created by private sectors. So I'm glad to have people, young people like Ibu Tias, De Tias, who is now into entrepreneurship because she will be the one who will drive the economic growth because she will create employment. And it has proven that 90% of employment in the world are created by private sector, not the government. So don't be a Pagawi Negeri anymore. <laughs> so, not only that, in the US, 75% to 80% of private sector companies are owned by families. And in this part of the, of the world, in Indonesia, and in all other countries in Asia, on average, 90%, 95%, even 99% of the private sectors are dominated by the family business. So I'm glad that Ibu Tias has started his own family business. But Haryadi, maybe hopefully he can start a family business producing animation. So these are the heart and the engine of growth of the economy. Now what happens if these people who created the private sector who are in business are very greedy? If they don't understand their role, because when they put up a business, actually that business has other responsibility. And what are other responsibilities? A responsibility to the other stakeholders. Oh, who are the stakeholders? First and foremost is your employee. And second is your customer. You have to produce a good product. And third, maybe if you borrow money from the bank, it's your bank. You have to pay back your loan. And maybe your suppliers. If they are told me, I have many suppliers in Sidoardo. So you have to be responsible. So whenever you create a business, you are responsible not only to put your business be sustainable and profitable, but also to the other stakeholders. Now what happens if these people are greedy? They just want to enrich themselves and don't care about the other people, even the employee. That's what happened in our financial crisis when you analyze. It's because the greed is. Because you put up the human face, there is a human touch from the business uh, atmosphere. So, the globalization at the time was focused merely on the economy and the financial aspect. And not so much on the environmental, or social, or people. That's why I thought this generation should understand that profit, wealth is not all about money. And I'm glad that we have this event. Wealth is about also sharing an ideas and knowledge. Because by the way, to increase poverty is not only about improving your wealth or financial outcome, but also about how you take care of others, the so social and environment. So you have to put the social, political, cultural, and even spiritual. So in my job in corporate government, I always tell many directors and commissioners, actually my job is to actually to put the spirit into what you are doing. So I don't I don't hesitate to tell them about the faith, about the God. Because no matter you are Muslim, Hindu, Buddhist, Christianity, you always have the courage or the dreams to serve others. And that's precisely in the business environment, to serve others means that you have to, res to, be, to respect the rights of your stakeholders. So hopefully we have a globalization with the human face, justice, equality. And that's what we, we are now, that I'm now having a passion. I'm very, in the last 10 years, my role is just to help the company the business leaders, BOD, board of directors, board of commissioners, to understand their roles because, hey, when you are sitting at the commissaries or the director, president directors, you have the responsibility not only to make your company sustainable, but also to increase the wealth of your employee, be responsible to your customers, to banks and other stakeholders. And on, it's very complicated. This is how to show you how greedy they are. They actually just borrow and borrow and borrow, but they don't want to book their debt into their financial report, they transfer it to other companies. And then what happens? When the investors see that the company looks, wow, this is beautiful, the company we thought, yeah, I want to invest again. So it happened on and on until finally when the, when the share of Enron declining, then everyone realized that actually the CEO, the commissioners, the director of Enriching himself. 
We have another case. I give you another, some of the example of bad governance. These are very educated people in the bank or society generally, in the Paris. And how much did it cost because of the greediness of this guy? By the way, he graduated in a very famous uh, university in, in France. He lost, because of the trading scandals, he lost 7.14 billion US dollars. How big is the economy of Indonesia? It's around almost 500 billion US dollars. So it's a big chunk. Look at this guy. Another example, Olympus in Japan. You, everyone likes uh, camera here, so we have Olympus. What happened to Olympus? The Board of Commissioners has colluded to hide the loss of Olympus. And we have another one. This is a very famous one. Man of Economy. This Bernard Madoff in the US is basically uh, 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 a multi-level uh, multi financing. So he had this himself and he ended up of now he was jailed for life. And if, if you were jailed for life, the Hukum Somorido is just like you are murdering more than one people. So that's how serious you are. So we have our own and it was around 14.5 trillion white pot overnight. So you know what cost it will be in the, in the economy if these people are operating in the, in the business sectors. <coughs> so we have our own case, a lot of uh, environmental degradation in Kalimantan, for instance, because of <coughs> irresponsible businessmen. So what, where did it go wrong? Why lessons are not learned? You know, we have to have this kind of you know, anchor place. Imagine all the people living in the world. So that's what the, uh, 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 who is that? John, uh, no, yes. The social dimension, economic dimension, it, it leads us into solidarity, security, wealth, future, and just inequality. So, just to, to end my presentation, there's a very nice company, a very good company. You all know about this. This is a Swiss knife. A Swiss knife a year ago was in trouble because of the 9-11 in uh, New York, the 9-11 the terrorist attacks. And you know what happened is that there is no passenger can carry knife on the plane. So suddenly overnight, their sales dropping off. So they are in trouble of bankruptcy. So what the leader of this company is very creative. What did they do? They don't want to lay off atau memecat semua pegawainya, but they go to all other companies that they know and ask them whether the employee can stay with them for a couple of years while the company will restructuring. So they were able to put some of the employee in other companies to work for because this, the employee of this company are very creative because this is a creativity industry also. So, and then they tried to improve their company for a couple of years, and finally they were able to diversify their products. They are not, no longer only producing Swiss knife, but also other products. And once they survive, they go back to the other company, and they ask if their employee can work again with, uh, with the Swiss knife. So that's how the example of how responsible a corporate leader should be. Because it's not a matter only a matter of how you make your own money, but also you make sure that your prosperity are being shared with others. So I have a very one slide. Can you go to the animation movie? Though this animation is not as good as the one made by Pak Ariadi, I'm sure it all of you know. Uh, but this is to just to give you an idea that teamwork is very important. And even in my passion of corporate governance, I'm now trying to help the OJK, Autoritas Jasa Keruangan, the Financial Service Authority in Indonesia, primarily Bapepans, to put together all stakeholders in Indonesia to improve the corporate governance. Because by the way, corruption is not happening only in the public sector. Corruption in the public sector, perhaps the rule of the capital. But in the private sector, the corruption in Indonesia is a huge, huge problem. And that's precisely my passion right now. And I think this gives you an answer. And a teamwork is very important. This not sound? Can you repeat again? It's a very short video. No, 
macam Okay, anyway, you just imagine, imagine Thank you. 